listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for he As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio on Blog Talk Radio iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Praise God. Hey, family. Thanks for joining me again this week. This is your host, Reverend Pat Randall. You are listening to Declaring the Finished Work on When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Amen. So here we are again, another Thursday. Amen. They seem to roll around faster and faster, but it doesn't really matter. Because, you know... God wants us to learn how to live in the now. Live in the now. And once we grab a hold of that truth of living in the now, I believe that we will no longer be controlled by the constraints of time. Glory to God. 
I am going to pray and then I'm going to move into uh, this week's message. I'm continuing on God in a Box. This is actually part three. I have been going through so much. The Holy Spirit has just been speaking to me in volumes. And I'm taking these notes as quick as I can as I'm, I'm hearing him. And as he's leading me to different scripture references. I don't know how long this this series is going to take. But you know I am so grateful for the Holy Spirit. We are blessed. Jesus said that. He had to leave so that he could send. He could send the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, when he spoke that to the disciples, they definitely didn't quite understand it because they didn't want him to leave. But Jesus understood that the next phase was even greater. Even greater. Having the Holy Spirit teaching us and guiding us convicting us of righteousness amen convincing us that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that is our identity that's our standing our standing is that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus glory to God such a wonderful wonderful thing to meditate and dwell on but I need to pray amen praise God hallelujah hallelujah we praise you Lord God we thank you for this day we thank you that you are more than enough you're everything that we need Everything that we want, everything that we desire is found in you. We thank you, Lord God, that you have placed us in your Son, in Christ Jesus. That we are one with you. That there is this constant communion that is going on between us. We thank you. We thank you that we can hear your voice that you are as close to us as our very breath, that there is no interruption in our fellowship. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. That is more than enough to just be in constant fellowship with you, to know that we are loved with an everlasting love, a love that will never leave us and never forsake us. A love that will drive out every fear, every anxiety, every worry, every doubt. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you that you are continuing to move us in, into that place called abundance. Abundance. That our life will be fruitful. Fruitful. And you continue to prune us. So that we continue to bear even more fruit. So we're just going to abide in you. You are our safe place. Thank you so much for this day. Everything that we need is contained in this day. You have provided for us. I thank you for the broadcast today. I thank you, Lord God, that you have already been in this moment. Everything that I need is in this moment. The Holy Spirit is present to lead and guide and direct this broadcast. I thank you that no weapons formed against this broadcast shall prosper. The airways will be open and clear, unobstructed. Amen. Praise God. Your word will go forth with power. Power and effectiveness, touching and changing hearts, converting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we yield this hour to you. Have your way. Have your way in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So here we are, part three of God in a Box. 
Here we are on this journey to move outside of our places of comfortability, uh, getting out of uh, a zone that we are so familiar with that we just kind of move through it without even really giving much thought to it. But God is, by His Spirit, is provoking us into a greater place in this season. And that's what this God in a Box series is all about. In the beginning of this series, um, I, I was defining what this box meant because it is a an invisible box and it is comprised of our thoughts and and our beliefs and 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 our thoughts and our beliefs come from different places uh even though you may be saved born again uh, what you have to come to realize is that all of your beliefs are not coming from the word of God. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He is the spirit of truth. So he is going to root up and expose these lies, these perversions that are actually from the dark one, from the evil one, from Satan. Amen. But Jesus came to set the captives free. So our thoughts and our beliefs, they, they form the wall of uh, the walls of, of, of this, this, this invisible box it it sets the boundaries of, of our box and and most of the time without knowing we don't even realize just how much these parameter parameters that have been set how they limit God in our lives and how they limit who we are in God but praise God God is doing something great in our lives in this very moment as you are listening to this message the spirit of God is moving in you because he lives in in you the holy spirit is in you the father son and the holy spirit has made their abode in you hallelujah god lives outside of our intellect our ability to think in a logical way god is spirit he says himself that he is spirit that's how he defines himself and the truth is, is that you and I, we are more than our mind. We're more than our intellect. We are spirit. And that is the part of us that is in constant communion with God. Our spirit is perfect. So we can rely. We can trust that our spirit is is in constant communion with God. And so what we are hearing from the spirit of truth through our spirit is what is needed to renew our minds. It's the spirit of God that renews our mind. Not intellect, not knowledge, but it's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God. It's not, when I say knowledge, I'm thinking about facts. Just It's not about just knowing facts of, about God. But it is the spirit that spirit gives life. Amen. And, and it's the spirit of God that renews our mind, that washes and continuously, continuously washes and cleanses us. For the word of God is spirit. It is Jesus. Jesus is spirit and life. Hallelujah. And Jesus himself tells us that they that worship 
God must worship in spirit and in truth. So it is with our spirit that we truly worship God. Hallelujah. Amen. So in order for us to get outside of our box and move into this place where there are no boundaries, it means living in and by the Spirit. We have to walk by the Spirit. You know, there are numerous scriptures um, that are instructing and guiding us about the need for walking by the Spirit. It says in Galatians 5, in chapter 5, it talks about if we walk by the Spirit, that we won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. And and, and when we abide in God, it's it's when we abide in Jesus, Jesus said He's the true vine. And if we stay connected, if we remain, if we abide in Him, and He's not talking about our physical bodies, He's talking about... um. Our, our hearts, our hearts being with him. Because spiritually, we are really always connected to him. But our heart has to be where our spirit is. Because, it, you know, it's, it's out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And as a man is, uh, you know, in your heart, I mean, what really... Um, comes to pass in your life is what is truly in your heart which is why we guard our hearts with all diligence amen amen and uh, John 14 uh, Jesus is speaking and he's saying that the father is in him and he is in us and the whole purpose of this is that we would be perfectly one uh, you can see even in the Old Testament the prophecy that was coming forth about the time when God would uh, cleanse us with um, of all of our filthiness. He would cleanse us with a clean water. He would give us a new heart. He would replace the stony heart with a heart of flesh. That he would give us a new spirit. He would give us an undivided heart. He would give us one heart. Glory to God. And that he would make his abode in us that he he would come and live in us jesus says that he and the father would make will make their abode in us when we abide in him and there is there is no separation i love that love scripture where it says that what can separate us from the love of God? God is love. That's the other thing. And love is a spirit. It says God has given us a spirit of love, a spirit of power, a spirit of a sound mind. And um, he is love. And so when we abide in love, we are abiding in his spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to read John 14, 12 through 14. I believe that this is a scripture that God is preparing us to move into. This is a prophetic word from Jesus about us. He, it starts on uh, John 14. It starts in verse 12. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Amen. And because he has sent the Holy Spirit... Glory to God. We are able, we are able to have this direct connection with the Father and the Son in heaven. Is a, we have a direct connection. Glory to God. 
Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes I feel so limited by words because I'm always, uh, not always, but, you know, I, I'm concerned about how I phrase things, uh, the particular words that I use because I don't want them to limit and I don't want the words to, to misdirect. So during this season, we're just going to have to move in the spirit. I, I want you to travel with me in the spirit so that you can hear in the words that you need to hear in your heart as I go through this series and as I share scriptures and as I try to express what uh, God is revealing to me the rhema that's coming to me and the revealed word through the scriptures that by the spirit that you will be receiving it the Holy Spirit will be speaking to you and using words that that you will readily be able to to understand amen glory to God the one thing I want to focus on, um, well, actually, there's two things. First of all, he said even greater works than these that we would do the works that he that he that he 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 did while he was here, and even greater works than these uh, will we do because he was going to the Father because of that position that he has now at the right hand of the Father, seated at the right hand, that, that right hand with that power and that all authority and, and everything is all power, you know, all power now is, 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 is unto our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus and, and all dark powers and principalities and, um, all of that is underneath his his feet. Glory to God. So he is in this supreme place of, of authority where he is. And so when we use his name and, you know, I looked up the uh, Greek word and the definition for that word for name. And this name means that it is covering the rank and the authority the character of that the character is represented in the name so when we use the name of Jesus think of the fact that you are using his rank as the son of God his authority as the son of God his character hallelujah his character glory to God his interests, his 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 pleasures, his command, his excellencies. Those are invoked when we use his name. So we're saying that we are moving and we are saying that we are a aligning ourselves with his authority and with his character glory to God with his excellencies that we are doing his pleasure glory to God when we ask for things in his name and he will do it because we are abiding in his name his name expresses all of who he is is and as we abide in him we are able to come into agreement with all that he is understanding that as he is so are we in the earth and so when we stand here in the earth as ambassadors of Christ we are standing representing him we're not representing ourselves we're not caught in our intellect we're not caught in our own personal agendas hallelujah but we are 
expressing a higher life, a higher life, living in subject to the dictates of this world is a lower form of life. And actually, I will start to, I don't know how much I will be able to touch on it, but I want to get into culture and how culture shapes and forms the thoughts of people. But because we are a new creation, glory to God, that we are not subject to the cultures of this world. Amen. We are not subject, even though they have had an influ- an influence on us in the past but now now we are able to live beyond beyond the culture that is in this world and the one thing we have to recognize that the culture that is here in this world is perverted it is perverted by the enemy uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Mm. The glory of Christ, who is the image of God. That's beautiful. But the God of this world, Satan, He is the God of this world. And he has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So there is a spirit here of the God of this world. Ephesians 2 2 says it this way. Uh, It says, the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And so what we see here, glory to God, in culture, we see this perversion because man being under the influence of the prince of the air, the God of this world, established established the various culture. Now, there has... Um, In the body of Christ, there has been a great move on this teaching about the seven uh, cultural mountains, the seven systems operating in this world. And uh, the teaching is, is that we as the body of Christ, we should be dominating and taking over the territory of these cultural mountains. Now, in some ways, that sounds good. Because as children of God, because think about it, the scripture tells us that even creation, the earth, everything that is created here on this planet is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They're under the weight of this travailing, uh, under the, the earth is under this, this curse, and it's waiting for the, the sons of God to be manifest, waiting for us. But we have been so focused on um, dominating and being successful and um, taking authority. But we have to first, by the Spirit, dominate and take over the culture that lives in us right now. We need to look at the culture because if not, we will continue to perpetuate 
this broken system that is already in place. And we actually see that happening where you have believers who are not fully convinced of the culture of the kingdom of God and they misrepresent what it means to be born again when we see things um people picketing and and carrying signs and saying that God hates this and and uh protesting this and protesting that and we, I mean we get into all kinds of things and and the body, even the body of Christ is divided so in order for us to even to overtake or to take back territory that rightfully belongs to us, we've got to deal with having divided hearts. We don't, we have not yet moved into living in the reality of the fact that God has given us an undivided heart. He has given us one heart. So we are to move as one people, one under one God by one spirit, that spirit of unity. So I think that we are getting ahead of ourselves by trying to go into the political arena and try to impart something that hasn't really been imparted in our lives, that is not really real in our lives. And what we end up doing is we go in with a mixed message. We go in with a little bit of the gospel and a little bit of the world, and we go into a system that is very worldly. And we are not as effective as we should be. The power and the authority that God has given us, we're not as effective because we have not allowed the Spirit of God to change the culture in our personal lives. Because we are still walking under the influence of the culture the culture that comes from these seven mountains and and I'm going to name the seven mountains and I you know I I I actually added a eighth mountain the acceptable teaching is these seven mountains but I've added an eighth eighth mountain because I think it is a it has a huge impact on the lives of people okay so these are the the, the seven mountains that they are currently um, everyone's talking about, and that's the um, the cultural mountain of education, uh, then government, um, economy, art, entertainment, religion, family, and media. Today I want to talk about, I want to kind of just zoom in on just generally the culture of our nation here in the United States. The condition of our country that we are currently in is because we are focused on personal success we are focused on what people think about us we are focused on uh, social standing we are focused on having power and authority Uh, 
it's a very selfish kind of um, self-consuming kind of environment. And I know that we believe that our country has been founded on godly principles and that is partly true and i think the what we keep missing is is that it was founded on a mixture of godly principle and worldly principle And that is why we see the brokenness in this system because it is not, our country has never operated purely from godly principles. Our hearts have not been pure. If you study our history closely, you look at the things, you look at our our documents, the Constitution, the, uh, the Declaration of Independence, those who wrote them, the, the arguments that took place in even trying to um, formulate these, 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 these documents that would govern our country, um, there were those who were more spiritual than others and they compromised because people had other agendas, other things, other interests and self-interest. And so things were adjusted to accommodate that. So one of the things that the body of Christ must begin to see is the truth that this country is founded on a mixture of humanism and godly principle. And that is why it is broken. It was created. It was cre- this. These systems were created by broken people. So we're in process. This country is in process. The body of Christ is in process, and it is crucial for the body of Christ, the people of God, to commit to the process of being totally sold out to the kingdom of God and understanding what that is and what that means. Amen. Amen. You know, we're in a capitalistic society and it works as long as greed is not present. But as you can see, greed is present. And therefore, we have people who are right now are suffering because they haven't had raises and I don't know when. And, you know, the economy uh, is still, uh, the cost of things is still rise. The cost of living continues to rise but their wages aren't rising because companies are more interested in making money than they are in developing and sowing into the resources of their employees. And because we were founded on a mixture of humanism and godly principles what eventually will happen is that 
it will begin to break down and disintegrate. So even the things that had a moral standard, we can see that even the moral standard is degrading. It is diminishing. I'm going to stop right here. This this is really, uh, you know, I, I really want to... Um, come back to this this whole cultural thing i'm i'm looking at the na- our nation as a as a whole i i'm looking at what's going on in our government what's going on in politics what go what's going on in our education system what's going on in um in in art and entertainment what is happening in 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 media um, and what we see happening um, in our, our churches, all of this is because of the influence of the God of this world. And that is why we are where we are. But God is calling us to get out of this box We've allowed this culture to be a box for the living God. And he's calling us out of the out of this box, this this culture, this this man made culture. Father, I thank you and I praise you. I thank you, Lord God. This is um This is a monumental task, but in your sight, because you are majestic, you are greater, you created the universe, there is nothing that is hidden to you, and that your very spirit lives on the inside of us. So though it may seem like a monumental task, this journey of learning to live in you, to walk by the Spirit and live by the Spirit, to to live as a child of the kingdom of God, to move into the place that we are walking as the sons of God that all of creation is waiting for. This is a small matter in your presence. So I thank you that as I continue on this task, this assignment that you have given me in this particular series. That your spirit is moving, Lord God. It's not just about the words that I speak, but it is also about the power of your spirit, that spirit of love that is causing us to conform to your will and to your way that you are having your will and your way with us i thank you that more and more hearts are surrendering because they realize that there is more that there is more and that they have been accepting things that are beneath their inheritance i thank you for the light of your word that hearts and minds are being enlightened and that we are seeing that there is is more and that our enemy because we only have one enemy and flesh and blood is not our enemy that enemy has been coming against us first of all with that religious spirit that's always condemning and judging But I thank you, Lord God, that you are freeing us here, especially here in the United States. You are freeing us from that religious spirit. That we are getting outside of the border because that religious spirit is confining and it is of the devil. We saw it at work during the time when you walked the earth, Lord. And they were ready to put you to death. Because they were so blinded by this religious spirit. Has the appearance of godliness. But lacking the power. 
the power that only comes from you, Lord. So I thank you that as I end this 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 message for today, Father God, that you are doing a work in our hearts. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your faithfulness. You have always been faithful. You've always been faithful. While we were still enemies of the cross, Lord, you died for us. You took our judgment. You're faithful. You're faithful. You're faithful, Lord. We worship you and we praise you. We worship you. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say In the strength of my Lord, I will trust in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you who are listening right now, who have not opened the doors of your heart and received Christ Jesus as Lord and as Savior. This is your moment. Just receive him, knowing that he has forgiven you of all sins. He has taken your punishment upon the cross. And he is broken. He is broken broken the chains, the chains of sin and death that have held you bound and that you are now free. So just ask him to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Recognizing, hallelujah, that he is God who came down in the flesh. Amen. And became that perfect sacrifice for your sin hallelujah hallelujah let him wash you wash you white as snow cleanse you of all unrighteousness and bless you with the gift of his righteousness hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord thank you jesus 
praise you, God. So we're going to come back. This is, I mean, this message itself is uh, is a, a mountain. Hallelujah. I was talking about the seven mountains of uh, the seven cultural mountains. And the eighth one that I'm going to be adding to it, and I believe needs to be in the list, is the one on medicine. Medicine. The health industry. There has been such a demonic attack on these physical bodies. And the system is so corrupt um, in terms of selling you things that you don't need. Medicine and then selling things that cause other problems. And so we're going to talk about. Uh, this is what the the prince of the air is offering us in these seven mountains education government and politics economy finance and business and, and medicine health industry the art entertainment industry religion uh in in our families and in media what 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 the the god of this world is trying to offer us but we are rejecting it and we're putting him on notice. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So this perversion of these cultural mountains that you are offering on us are not the culture of the kingdom of God. And we reject it. Amen. So let me not start up again because we are. I am not going to be teaching again. But anyway, tomorrow night we got Friday Night Joy with Reverend Ray and friends. So... Tune in at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then he's back here on Sunday at uh, 7 p.m. Glory to God for Bread of Life. Amen. Be blessed. Continue to, I want to encourage you also to continue to meditate. I started talking about all the wonders of, of God's creation and and his majesty but go to the scriptures and just read about all these great things that God did the the parting of the red seas and and how he delivered Daniel from the lion's den and the 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 Hebrew boys the three Hebrew boys in the in the fiery furnace I mean all these great stories and the stories in the New Testament of Jesus and and how he moved through the earth and how he healed sinners and delivered them and cast out demons and and um uh, brought people back from the dead. I mean, it's a glorious thing. And then also, even science-wise, begin to look at the wonders. I mean, I was looking out the window and I was looking at this little tiny butterfly that had just lit on a, a leaf of one of the, the bushes outside the, my kitchen window. And I was just thinking, like, all these glorious creations – and how they work in bees and, you know, it was a couple of bees around the bush and how important the, the pollen pollination is. And there, there is just so much to this universe. It is amazing. And we walk around on this planet and I think we forget about all the miraculous things that are happening just in nature itself. Amen. Amen. And the miraculous things that happen in you. In you. You are a universe within itself. Hallelujah. And the almighty God, the one who created everything, his spirit dwells on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to end it right there. Thank you so much again, family, for joining me. Hallelujah. The family of man, we are God's creation. We are all from the same family. Doesn't matter what natural family we were born in. We are all from the same family. We all came from God. We were created out of his being created in his image amen and we have yet to see who we are yet to see who we are so much more so much more so much more so god bless you continue to just walk by the spirit during the rest of your day 
maybe you may have lost sight of that at the first half of your day. But hey, I love new beginnings. And we can always, a new beginning can happen like an hour from now. You can have a new beginning. You can hear a word from God. And at that moment, it becomes a new beginning. It opens up. It opens up your life. And it changes you in a way that's unchangeable. God bless you. Love you. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. So all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website www.whenchristianspeak.com and click on our donation page. Oh, give